Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today's play is from the hardware store. Yes, I'm finding my art supplies in the aisles of the hardware store, most specifically with the drywall section today. And this stuff is called drywall tape, and it has all these wonderful holes and circles in it. It's a paper kind of tape, so it absorbs medium very, very well. And it's also adhesive. It's got a sticker on the back. So, you know, what more could I want in a supply? And it comes in big rolls for not much money at all. Now, why am I going to the hardware store? Well, that's one of the ways that I've rediscovered how to let myself play, and that's the focus of the video series all about playing called Let's Play. There's also a link party, so be sure to check that out and share what you're making, too, over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Now this drywall tape comes plain in this very neutral color because, you know, people are using it, I don't know, like in home construction or when painting walls. They don't want rainbow colors on it for some reason, but I do want rainbow colors, so I'm going to change that. I'm going to use the jelly plate, put down some paint, and then the drywall tape, and any of the excess paint that I've got, that's why I'm pushing it down using the journal page there. That way it adheres, picks up all the paint, and I get a little extra bonus texture pattern building up in that future art journal page. Now I'm doing it this way because I found this to be the fastest, most pleasant way for me to do it. If I take a brush and just paint over it, which you can absolutely do, you can take a brush and paint over this stuff to make it whatever color you want. For me, that just takes more time than what I really want to put into it because I'm basically an impatient person and I just like to play. This one I'm going to put a different color on and you see how quickly I'm getting three of these done. I'm going to push it down basically to make sure they all stick. I'm just going to grab an art journal page again, pushing it down, making sure I've got the the, uh, what do you call that stuff, the drywall tape, making contact with the jelly plate so it picks up all of the color. I also want to pick up some of the fun dots that are in there, so I'm just going to push down some book text on there. These are future collage papers, art journal papers. Oh, look, I had two pieces of paper there. And as I pull these up, they're very, very quickly and completely painted. So didn't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. I did find that when I use a paintbrush, I had to think a little bit harder because what that meant is I, I would sometimes put a little too much paint on there. I know, I know you're shocked. If you've seen many of my videos, you know that that just never ever happens. Um, and so if I want just a smooth, even layer of paint, the jelly plate really is one of the best ways to do it. Now, why am I doing all these colors? Well, because I don't have any idea of what I'm doing with these. I just know I like the rainbow more than I like that neutral sort of off-white color that it was. So I'm going to give myself some options. A roll of this stuff was not very expensive, so it's very easy for me to play with. And that's one of the ways that using something from the hardware store really helps me play. With this one in particular, it's because it's just so cheap and affordable. If I experiment and play around with it, if it doesn't work out, so be it. It didn't cost me a fortune. And I've also got this big roll of it that seems to basically be a never ending roll. So it's going to go on and on and on forever. So I don't have that feeling like oh, I'm about to run out of something. I'm going to run out of it because I'm not. I've got a huge roll and I've had this roll for quite a while. <laughs> and it just, it's kind of like the never ending roll. Along the way also too, by using the jelly plate with this, I'm getting all sorts of cleanup papers here that has just a little bit of pattern on it. Again, that'll be great for collage, for art journaling, anything else that I want to do with paper. So now it's time to go build an art journal page with this. I'm going to take two of the colors and I'm going to just put them down at the bottom. But you know what? All those little holes, they scream, put another color behind me. So I want to put a color behind it that's going to pop. And for that, I'm going to do orange. Now at this point, I think I have a plan. I think I know what I'm doing, but you'll see, maybe I don't exactly know what I'm doing. There is all sorts of changing of the mind and let's just say an oops or two coming down the road with this. So I've got the two different colors there, which I was so sure I wanted. Man, I, my heart was set on that. And I'm like, well, maybe not. Maybe I just want to do all the same color. But maybe I want green and not blue. So here I sit in the land of just sort of auditioning different things, seeing which one makes me happiest. And this is the one that to me said, yes, this is the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to trim off the edges. And then what I'm going to do is just peel off the backing because this stuff is like a giant sticker. But the trick is to actually be able to grab the backing and pull it off. So once I've got that off, then I can just stick it right down. Probably would have been a good thing to wait until the paint was completely dry. But, you know, again, that's that patience thing. And why do I really have to have that? If something doesn't stick, I can always add a little bit of gel medium or something under it to make it stick later. So I've got both of these on there, and yeah, it's hanging off the edge. I'll actually trim that with scissors a little bit later in the video. 
To get an image going here, I decided to use this rubber stamp, and I can't remember what company it's from. If you happen to know, awesome, tell me and I will happily credit them. Um, it is of one of the bridges in London, and I'm inking it up with an Adirondack bright, Adirondack bright color, because I really want all sorts of color. I'm going rainbow here, which I know you're totally shocked that I'm going for rainbow with this. I've got the bridge, I've got the brightness, and now what should I put in there next? All that white space? Yeah, it's not going to last as white space. So I grabbed some washi tape that I've got, and this stuff are like little, almost like little circus posters or some kind of poster of some kind. So I'm going to cut some of those off and use those. One of the many cool things about washi tape is that it's basically a repositionable tape until you really, really, really stick it down all the way. So if I just rest those right there, I should be able to move them around, which will come in very handy because you'll see that I actually get persnickety a little bit later here about how things are lined up. I cut off five of them, not sure if I was going to use all five, wasn't even sure where I was going to position them, but there's one of these that didn't seem to fit with the others in my mind. And guess what? If it doesn't fit, I don't have to use it. So I'm going with four of them, and usually I'm not a line things up carefully person, but I felt like three of these were lined up, but one of them wasn't. And this is where I'm so appreciative for washi tape, because I could just peel that other one up and then straighten it back down. So I've got my colorful posters going on there from washi tape. Now, not everything that I do works out well at all. And we're just going to call this next thing an oops. I wanted to grab some yellow and put it inside the dot. So I grabbed a fine liner that has an acrylic ink in it, and it just sort of disappeared into it. Did not do what I thought it would do. So, yeah, we're just going to call that one oops. Somehow it's an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. No idea what it is. And the fact that it didn't work as planned, not a big deal. But I've still got that yellow on my mind, so I am just going to grab a brush and some acrylic paint and put yellow all around the background. Now some of you are probably wondering exactly where I got that washi tape. I'm willing to bet I'm going to get questions on that. And at the time of filming this, I have no idea where I got that. So I am going to do my best to find out where I got it, and I'll have a link for you over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Down below in the video description, or maybe even popping up on the screen, will be a link to that direct post. So if you're interested in any of these supplies, I'll have as many links to them as I can find. Remember earlier in the video where I was really thoughtful that I wanted that green on top of the orange? Yeah, that's going to completely change here, because now I want pink on top of it. So am I going to remove anything? No. I'm just going to line the pink right up on top of it. And this way now it has extra dimension. It's going to be even taller than what it was. And I kind of chuckle for all that thought I was putting into what color. It was absolutely irrelevant because I was going to change it anyway. And again, love the fact that this stuff is self-adhesive. Although I probably should have lined up the edge a little more carefully instead of getting caught up in all the excitement of switching colors here. Now that yellow is just too plain the way it is, so I'm going to grab a little heavy bodied white acrylic paint here, and I'm going to grab a stencil called Circular Patterns for Play that I designed for over at Stencil Girl Products. And playing on that whole circle idea that's from the drywall tape, I'm just going to stencil some circles, some circles around here. Boy, tongue tied today again. As I'm doing this, I don't want to do anything too perfectly. I want there to sort of to fade out. And now it's time to add a great big word on here. This word actually came from some packaging that I got, and of course I fell in love with it as soon as I saw it. So I'm going to cut off the do not bend, and I'm just going to stick with the it's here. But this is um, a chipboard cardboardy thing. It's kind of heavy, and it's going to be going on top of the, the sort of punchinella type drywall tape. So I need something that's really going to stick it down. So what I'm going to do is run it through my Xyron Creative Machine, and basically it's going to turn this into a complete sticker quickly and easily. I'm going to peel off that plastic backing from it, or the top, I guess it's really the top, and now what's left is my sticker. When I peel it off, it's going to be very, very sticky like a sticker everywhere, and that will help hold it in place because when working on something like this drywall tape, basically there are a lot of holes on there, so it's not going to have as much stuff to stick to, so wherever it does stick, I want to make sure that it's really on there. And I figured it would take way too much gel medium to do it, a dry adhesive made it so that it wouldn't warp on me. Well, now it's time to add a little bit more to these letters. So I'm just going to grab a pen and I'm going to trace around the letters, making them pop a little bit more, just giving it more of that it belongs in an art journal vibe. So I'm tracing around these and I'm actually trying to be reasonably careful or, well, careful for me. And in a moment here, you're about to see an oops because I'm tracing around these and then all of a sudden, 
the pen is not going to do what I wanted it to do. Now, is this going to be horrifying to me? Absolutely not. Watch here as I come and start on this E. This is where it's going to happen. And there is, see the movement there? It just, I've got that, oh, it's a smudge. It's a mistake. What am I going to do? All I'm going to do is color it in a little bit darker. And I'm going to take that as the cue as I'm doing other things to do it in other places. That was the opportunity for me in that great big old oops, is that now I can go add some more interest in other places, and I probably wouldn't have thought of that if I hadn't had that slip of the hand there. So is this art journal page all finished now? Mm, the answer is no. There needs to be more on this for me to be happy with it. But I'm not sure exactly what that is yet. So I'm going to take a break from this art journal page. I'm going to let it wait until the muse inspires me again. Now, if you've taken my Permission to Play workshop, which is free, by the way, so you're welcome to jump in anytime, you know that that is one of the ways that I've rediscovered how to let myself play is to take some of that pressure off to get it all done in one sitting. Just because I start an art journal page does not mean I must finish it within a set number of hours. I'm not under any legal binding contract with my art journal. And no matter what I end up doing with this art journal page, when I do it, I will most definitely be sharing either here on YouTube or over on my blog. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've had fun with this, you've enjoyed this video, and if you're still here, you probably did, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up, and I'd be so grateful if you know of somebody that you think would like a little more play in their day if you'd share this video with them. And of course, you can find out more of what I'm doing over on the blog. I've got a newsletter, I've got the free workshop, all that kind of stuff. You can find that all over at acolorfuljourney.com. Thank you so much for being a part of this colorful journey.